Hello to you friends. This is Dhamma on Air number 37. There is only one question, a very important question, but first, the normal intro. Namo Tasso Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Worthy Anabha and perfectly self enlightened was the blessed Buddha. The question here for the recording done on 24 September 2016 is the question number 119. What are the 24 conditional relations? Are they a part of Paticca Samuppada? Conditional or dependent coordination. We take first the first question. Yes, they are actually a part of dependent coordination. Dependent coordination means that if you should call it very short, when this is present or when this arises, this also arises. When this ceases, that also ceases. When this is present, that also is present. When this is absent, that also is absent. That's a very uh, crude explanation because actually the causal relation, the causal link between these two entities or processes are, can be of 24 different kinds. And this is much more than Western philosophy and Western logic and Western science, which has something like two or three at most kind of conditional relations, kinds of causality. But uh, I will explain them in detail and then hopefully these uh, two traditions of knowledge can cross-fertilize each other. Uh, so some of the philosophy from the East, which has some uh, systematic and even absolute level, it can uh, fertilize the West, uh, which has not re really been uh, informed about uh, the depth of this philosophy, of this logic, yet. So, what is dependent coordination? The condensed uh, ultra court answer is as such as when this is present, that also is present. When this is absent, that also is absent. When it comes to 12 points, the condition of ignorance causes mental construction to arise. The condition of mental construction causes consciousness to arise. The condition of consciousness causes name and form, mind and matter, naming and forming, minding and mattering to arise. Name and form, the condition of name and form causes six senses to arise. The condition of the six senses causes contact to arise. The condition of contact causes feeling to arise. The condition of feeling causes craving to arise. The condition of craving causes clinging to arise. The condition of clinging causes becoming bhava to arise. The condition of becoming causes birth, rebirth of the moment and of the life and of the body to arise. Birth, the condition the state of birth causes sickness, decay, aging, and death to arise. Sickness, decay, aging, and death causes suffering, dukkha, to arise. Such is the arising of this entire mass of suffering. This is the wrong way. This is dependent coordination. Why is the wrong ray? Because it's a ray, the sequence that leads to suffering. 
is not the sequence that leads to happiness. So it's a chain of conditioned events that each causes each other to arise, both in parallel and sequentially. But these conditional relations between these factors, these 12 factors, they are actually 24 in the Abhidhamma. The Abhidhamma is uh, the higher science of Buddhist philosophy. They are explained in the seventh Abhidhamma book, the Pachana. And a conditional relation is actually the causality or the effect between cause and effect. Cause and result, you can say, but we say normally cause and effect. So it's not the cause, it's not the effect. It's a conditional relation between cause and effect. It is how the cause causes or produces or induces the effect. So it's a conditional relation between cause and effect. In the illustration, it is the arrow between the star and the hexagon, the effect. It's an arrow, it's a conditional relation. It is not the cause, it is not the effect. It is what makes a cause become into the effect. There's 24 of these, but first, a little about, about the Patana, which is uh, the last book of seven in the Abhidhamma. The Buddha thought out uh, this in the fourth week after uh, enlightenment, where he didn't eat anything or uh, go to the toilet or drink anything for seven weeks. And he was sitting here in the, what we call the jeweled cloister. And then he later preaches to his, his mother, who has been reborn, who all dies one week after enlightenment. And then uh, was reborn at the Tevahimsa heaven, the heaven of the 33 devas. And she went down together with a lot of other devas, thousands of them, to hear the Buddha uh, speak the Abhidhamma. And he spoke, them, spoke it the entire seven books during a three months long speech, continuous speech. And only devas can, can, can understand that and can sit up and hear and listen for three months. So it, it can, the Abhidhamma is never spoken to humans. So it's above human level. And I'm no way expert in it myself, but what I know so far, I will try to share with you. But uh, don't despair if you find it difficult or too expansive uh, or too extensive uh, or too subtle. Just try to hang on and then try to get a taste of what it is. Because here the Buddha, especially the Buddha Gautama, he really shines. This is where you can somehow smell the depth and the scope of his uh, a gigantic intellect. So it's the seventh book. This, the only two of them is translated so far. Uh, uh, I'm toying with a dream about translating the, the five last in the, the last period of my life where I have a chance to understand it. And it's usually a field that is uh, very well understood in Burma. And uh, my translation and exposition of these 24 conditional relations are based on uh, a Burmese scholar called Lady Saidao, probably the best scholar of Burma uh, from the 19th century. He has written uh, manuals of the Dhamma, he, he wrote more than 70 manuals. Uh, so he wrote approximately one a year while he was a monk. Uh, a little more than one a year, actually. And he also wrote a manual of the Abhidhamma. And my commentary here on the 24 conditional relations are based on the commentary of our manual of Abhidhamma of conditional relation by uh, Venerable Lady Saidao, who originally wrote it in Pali, the language of the Buddha, but then it was has been translated into English. 
uh, in the 50s in Burma and recently been published in the West in the 70s and 80s. And they are available on the internet and I will give the link below. But just to go back to the Tibitaka, uh, the Tibitaka is three baskets of text, uh, roughly 56 volumes. That's the Vinaya Pitaka, which is all the rules and regulations for monks and nuns. Then there is the Sutta Pitaka, uh, which is the last part of it, which is also stories and poems and philosophy and events and so on. Uh, a lot of books, which also should be read by lay people. Uh, the Vinaya Pitaka is not so interesting. There is some historical detail, though, for, that can be interesting for lay people. But in general, it's the Sutta Pitaka that is uh, of interest for lay people. And then there's the Apidama Pitaka, which is these seven books. The seven books starts with the Dhammasangani, which is an enumeration of the ultimate realities. So Buddhist philosophy goes by two ways. It's analytical insights, which takes anything apart and ends with emptiness. And this starts with the Dhammasangani which enumerate, takes everything apart and enumerates in, into small parts uh, that is the ultimate realities. And then it's, it, it, it ends with the synthesis where they, all the parts are put together again with the patana, the conditional relations. And this is this end we will take today, the principal scheme of these 24 conditional relations. It has some bearing on modern science uh, there is some has been some tensions for the last century or so between a relativity theory, which is basically saying that gravity is a ge geometric feature of space-time, and has a basic concept of a continuous space-time. And then there's quantum theory, which basically is a discrete. Uh, theory, which also say that space-time is discrete. So these two are at tension with each other because of discreteness versus uh, continuity. And so there's been many attempts to unify these two theories into one, and this they are called quantum gravity. One of these uh, theories of quantum gravity is called causal sets. And they, it's about the building blocks of space-time and the point like events that form an ever expanding network linked by causality. So it's basically said that space time itself is made out of causality. As it's the conscious observer that uh, puts this into order and then perceives it as a continuous space time. This is not uh, pioneered, but uh, proposed by a researcher called Raphael Sorkin which now uh, works, he's a professor emeritus in, in Waterloo, Canada, at the Institute of Quantum Computing there. And then Faye Dauka, which is a professor of physics in, uh, in uh, London, Imperial College. So this theory of causal sets, which is under development, is by no means uh, finished, has an almost uncanny resemblance to the Buddhist philosophy of conditional relations. Basically, what is a root cause? And, and, and what is, for example, the root cause of space-time? What is discrete space-time made out of? Yeah, the answer to this, according to this physicist, is ca causal sets. And, and the, the answer from the Buddha is that there are some level of causality of ultimate realities that he calls conditional relations. And these two causal sets and condition relations, they remind me very much about each other. It's only one out of many theories. As you see, there's more than six different approaches to quantum gravity. But this causal set theory uh, has some resemblance to Buddhist philosophy, uh, which was spoken by the Buddha 2,500 years ago. We jump out it to with the first out of 24 is the root conditional relation, Hitu Pachaya. And there are six roots, we say. Greed, Loba is a root. Hate, Dosa is a root. And ignorance, Moha is a root. The, a root to what? A root to suffering. So 
this tree that has these roots seen there on the right, it grows suffering. It grows suffering. And uh, then there are three other roots, which you get usually by listening to a Buddha or one of his disciples, just like now. And they are called non-greed, aloba, which is the same as generosity. Non-hate, adosa, which is the same as friendliness, gentleness, kindness. And non-ignorance, which is the same as understanding or intelligence, amoha. These are all root conditional relations because it is rooted in them that people do this or that. Either they root out various behaviors. It's a root condition that a man falls in love with a woman. It's a root condition of greed. He wants to have sexual contact with this woman. So both his mental states and physical states, what he thinks and what he, how he dresses and how he behaves with his body, they are dependent upon this root condition of greed. While one who gives a monk uh, some books, as a person in New York, Brooklyn, New York, recently have done, he did this because of another root called aloba, which is the same as generosity. And they, this aloba root is now also causing him his physical states, which can be a smile on his face when he sees his video. And his mental states, which is the joy and satisfaction in his mind over have, having done something really good and really right, this is, is also rooted in a root, in this case, non-greed, non-greed, aloba. So this is, is how the first condition of relation should be understood. It is a root condition, something very deep, something coming very much from behind, both from the good side and the bad side. The next relation is the object relation, object conditional relation, aramanya, pachaya. All classes of consciousness, all sorts of mental states, all kinds of material qualities, all ideas and concepts, all phenomena no, whatsoever are either a visible object, an audible object, a smell object, a taste object, a tangible object or a cognizable object for the mind. So it is the hook the mind hangs the object on, this conditional relation. It is not the object itself. It is neither the mind itself that perceives the object. It's a connection between mind and the object. This connection is a conditional relation between mind and its object. And this is the object conditional relation, Aramanya Pachaya. Number three is the predominance conditional relation. Atipati. There are two kinds. It's an objective predominance and then there are coexistent dominance. An objective dominance is that, for example, when you, you regard an object as you like it very much, either a taste, some food, for example, or a film you see, or anything else that you like and regard highly. This is object, no, this is predominance condition relation. You have to, or the mind has to this particular object. While a coexistent dominance can be an intention, a wish to do, a will, an enthusiasm, or a curiosity, a, a kind of like a force a, in the same way that a, a force, a king has a force over his pawns in the chess of game. 
So it's a coexistent dominance in the sense of it overpowers or overcomes its relations. So the relation here between cause and effect is that it overpowers it, it dominates it, it overcomes it. That's a special kind of conditional relation. This is called the predominance conditional relation, adipati, pachaya. Number four is precedence conditional relations, anantara. All classes of consciousness and their mental properties which have just ceased before in the immediate preceding moment are related to other states with this precedence condition relation. It basically means what comes just before, just before now. The conscious moment you have just before now, the feeling you have just before now, the perception you have just before the perception you have now. It's a precedent state. So it's an order of precedence. For example, A comes just before B. B comes just before C, but it, just, it doesn't come just before K. So it's what comes just before is the precedence relation. So here, the relation, the conditional relation between cause and effect, it says the cause comes just before the effect. The egg comes just before the hen or the chicken. There's no intermediate state. This, the next one is a similar one, but a little other, a little other kind is called contigu contiguity condition relation, samanantara. All classes of consciousness, all mental states, all phenomena that are, are continuous, but not continuous with the preceding state. So this means that the condition relation between two states is that they are kind of like touching, but they are touching in a special way that is not continuous. It is continuous. And to explain this difference, then you can see uh, on the left side, a chain, for example, is not continuous. It's discrete single chains that are touching each other. Uh, and a domino pieces are neither continuous. They are contiguous because they touch upon each other, but they, 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 and they form a kind of like a line, but it's not a continuous line. It's a broken line, a discrete line. This is not the same or in opposition to continuity, which is unbroken. For example, the transition in the colors of the spectrum of light, the visible colors uh, from infrared to ultraviolet, the rainbow colors. This, this transition is continuous. You cannot put a, a special point where you say, and now there, there it changes, because the changes is very gradual and smooth and unbroken, just like a continuous flow of water. So here, the conditional contiguity, conditional relation number five is that it is the cause is touching upon the effect and comes immediately before that. And it's touching upon it, but it's not continuous with it. The sixth conditional relation is cognizance conditional relation, sahayata. It basically means that it's two things that are born together. So if this arises, that also arises. If they come into being, and goes synchronously, then usually you say they are coexisting and they are born together. So they come and go at the same time, caused by the same things. Then they are sahayata, they are, they are co-nascent, born together. All classes and consciousness and all mental states, all phenomena that are born together, co-arising with and co-existent with another state. They have this conditional relation. So the cause, the, the conditional relation between cause and effect here are that they have to be in existence at the same time. And they arise and cease together. So they arise and cease together. A special relation here. You can you see one get a much more this firm handle upon what is it that brings or can bring 
What is the conditions that cause the cause to be the effect, to become the effect? And here it is, that is, they are born together, they arise together and they cease together. The next one is mutuality or reciprocity. It's number seven, conditional relation. Annamanya. All classes of consciousness, mental states, phenomena that mutually and reciprocally support each other's state. So they mutually support, support each other as this chain of stones you see and the pieces of firewood that leaning upon each other. They support each other. If you take one away, then the whole stack fall. It takes one stone away, the whole stack fall. And the sitting people you see below on the left side, if one people, you take one people out of the row, then they all fall. So all are dependent upon all the other ones. They are mutually dependent or reciprocally dependent. So here the cause is in a conditional relation of mutuality to the effect. They, they, they mutually depend on each other, both way around. The cause depend upon the effect and the effect depend upon the cause. And they usually they are mutual, there are many of causes and many uh, effects also. This is the seventh conditional relation. The eighth is the support conditional relation. A little bit difficult, difficult is all classes of consciousness, mental states and phenomena that are independent upon each other, but not necessarily in mutual dependence. There are three kinds, coexistent, pre-existent and objective dependence. Coexistent dependence means that one has to, they, they, are, they, 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 they can only can exist if they are both in existence at the same time, simultaneously. Pre-existent means that one has to exist before the other one can exist. And objective dependence is one is an object for the other one. Then they cause each other. So correlation of parameters, as you see, uh, can be the same as causal dependence. It's not always the case, but it can be the same as that one. If one parameter goes down and another one parameter goes up, as you see on the right side of the screen, then they are in dependence, causal dependence on each other. So they cause variation in each other. This is suppose this is a support conditional relation. Nisaya Pachaya. Then there's a stronger one of the, these is decisive support or incisive support or induction conditional relation. Upanisaya. These conditional relations are strong inducers. So they, they don't have, the, the, we say in, in Western philosophy, a, they are naturally sufficient cause or cogent reason for their effect. So this means that if there's only one, A is only enough to cause B, as you see. A only is sufficient cause. A is enough to induce B. Then this decisive support condition is satisfied. If both B and C has to be present to cause D, then they are both required, but they are not enough, they are not sufficient. So this decisive support means that if that the, the cause A can in itself cause whatever phenomena, it has as the effect. It doesn't need any other uh, causal relations. Number 10 is pre-nascence condition, Purijata Pachaya. So the relation of pre-existence refers to for something previously arisen, which forms a base, source or cause for something arising later on. The classic example is that the five physical sense organs, the skin, the eye, the, the mouth, uh, tongue, the nose, and the ear, and they have to be present in order to make sense contact. So they have to be pre-existent, pre-born, born before, come into being before sensation and thinking can occur. So the sense organs and the brain 
has to be there before sense contact, sensation, experience, and thinking can occur. This is then here the, the conditional relation between cause and effect, for example, the cause of contact, sense contact, is these already existent sense organs. The conditional relation number 11 is the post nascent conditional relation, Pachayataya, Pachayaya. This means that there is, and this is something, it's not the same as what we in Western philosophy call retrocausality, where it is assumed that something in the future uh, should cause something in the past. And usually there's a breakdown of logic there. But this is uh, something else. Uh, here, it is something that, that is born after, it comes into being after whatever it causes or supports. For example, consciousness supports and maintains the body even though consciousness is born later, comes into being later than the physical body. So first the fetus starts to develop in the womb, but it first later on become conscious, so conscious so that it can start feeding and seeking food and seeking uh, funds to buy food and other life circumstances like clothes and housing to maintain itself. So consciousness causes or maintains the body, even though it comes later into being than the body. And the same thing with the rain. The rain supports, maintains and causes the plants to grow, even though the rain comes later than the plant. The plant has already sprung up, the tree has already stand there for 100 years, then it rains. Then this rain is a causal factor for the tree to grow, even though it came later. So it's not retrocausality. The effect the tree is growing was there before. So the rain arrives, the rain starts pouring down after, and so it this it, it causes the tree to grow. Is here the the cause the rain is born after post nascent and it's a po post nascent conditional relation to the tree growing. Same thing with the consciousness in the body. Then there's the repetition conditional relation, asivana pachaya. This is a relation of between cause and effect by habitual recurrence. It refers to states whose probability of arising increases by iterative repetition. As the more you repeat something, the better, the more prob prob probable it is to happen in the future. And this may be related to this quantum Zeno effect where a repeated measurement on a system can lock the system, which otherwise is fluctuating between random states, it can lock the system only in one state. So the state, uh, the system keeps repeating this single state, any particular state. So any state increases its own recurrence. And this also goes for mental states. If you are very greedy, if you were very greedy yesterday, then you are also probably uh, much greedy yes today. And same thing with anger, and same thing with ignorance, doubt, and uncertainty, because of habits. Any mental state is forming habits. And the way they form habits, habituation, is this repetition conditional relation between cause and effect, between one particular conscious mental state and then its increased probability of occurring or recurring in the future. This was number 12. Number thir 13 is the karma condition relation, kamma pachaya. So this means that the pre-born karma, which is intentions in a previous life, is generating the conditional relations, the cause for karmically produced mental and physical phenomena in a later rebirth, in a later time point. So the conditional relation here between cause and effect is karma. And what is karma? It is what intention, said the Buddha. It is what one intends, and thus sows now, one experiences and reaps 
later. So this man, his, it is his intention to act, to push, to run the month, first domino break, that then later propagates through time and through causality. And then later, the last domino break in this circular stack will hit him in the head. So it's his intention to push that causes the events to fall out later by this karma conditional relation. It's very specific conditional relation. It's good to get a handle on that intention can condition and do condition in every moment because in any moment you're conscious that will be formed and an intention. This creates then future and particular future according to the constituents, the properties and the ethical qualities of this intention. Next is related to that is the karmic result, vipaka, which is usually understand, misunderstood in, in the West as the karma. The karma is the intention to act, while the effect of the action later on is the vipaka. So this is a karmic result conditional relation. This relation of effect is the states and conscious moment born or caused by prior karmically active intentions. It's the final fruition of any willed and performed action. So any intentional cause results in a specific effect. And the way this effect is related to its cause is through this karmic result conditional relation. Vipaka, Pachaya. Also a special conditional relation. So you say you have a result. You say, what caused that? And there was this particular karmic result, conditional relation, backward in time to a specific intention. Number 15 is the nutriment conditional relation, ahara pachaya. This is also a very nice feature of Buddhist philosophy that it, it points out four nutriments to the process of existence upon which the process of existence, of rebecoming in each moment, burns. What are these fourfold fuels or nutriments, ahara, upon which any process of being burns? They are material food, kapalinka ahara, which maintains the body. Two, sense contact, passa, which feeds feeling and perception. An intention, uh, chetana, which constructs karmic rebirth, causes a karmic rebirth in each moment and in each life. And then four consciousness, vinyana, which sustains renewal of consciousness. So each moment of consciousness causes a future moment of consciousness. The next one and further down the line. So these four feeds body, feeling, perception, Rebirth and consciousness. Actually, they feed the five clusters of being. Form, feeling, perception, mental construction, and consciousness. And that is what a being is. It's these five clusters of being. A process of being is these five clusters of being. The khandas. Form, feeling, perception, mental construction, and consciousness. They are caused by this nutriment conditional relation. Ahara. Next up is the ability uh, conditional relation. Indriya Pachaya. So there are 20 uh, abilities. And these abilities causes future mental states and future physical states to arise. They are the eye, the ear, the nose, the tongue, the body, the mind vitality, bodily pleasant feeling, bodily pain, the ability to feel gladness, the ability to feel sadness, the ability to be in equanimity, the ability to have faith, the ability to be energetic, the ability to be aware, the ability to be concentrated, the ability to understand, and the assurance, I will know 
what I not yet knew. And the ability of the highest knowledge. And the ability of him who knows the highest knowledge. These are the 20 abilities that produces results. It's evident, for example, that the ability to see produce mental states, for example, visual perceptions. And the ability to see can make you do things that, for example, walk uh, on the street, which is physical movement of physical states, move, movement of the body, huh? or build a house, which is also a physical state, which is difficult to do if you cannot see. And the same thing with the other abilities. So the effect, the conditional relation between cause and effect is here an ability, an impersonal ability to be able to do something, to see, to hear, to smell, to taste, to think, to be aware, to concentrate, and so on. This is the 16th the ability conditional relation between cause and effect. Then there's a jhana conditional relation as the seven jhana factors, uh, they are also call mental or physical states in the, w w those who are present within the jhana absorptions. And this is presence of directed thought, sustained thinking, joyous rapture, happiness, sadness, equanimity, and concentration into absorption. These are the seven causes or conditional relations between cause and effect within the field uh, of jhana meditation. Then there's the path, the 18, is a path condition relation, matcha pachaya. So these 12 pact factors, they cause karmically advantageous or disadvantageous states. So it's the knowledge in right view, samaditi. It is right or wrong thinking. Right speech, right action, live livelihood, right energy or effort, or wrong effort. Awareness, right or wrong. Concentration, right or wrong. Wrong views, mitya ditti, wrong speech, wrong bodily action, and wrong livelihood. These are the 12 path factors, which are conditional relations that causes future advantageous or disadvantageous physical and mental states to arise. The 19 is the association condition relation, Sampayutta. Due to their inseparability, are all physical and mental states arising and disappearing simultaneously? These are related by coalescence or associations. And coalescence is that they are unified in the same way as a water drop coalesce with another water drop, or the same way that people are associated in an association, a professional association, or a sport association, or something like that. So they are associated and cannot be separated uh, in that, if you say in the, in the association relation, there's no separation also between the two water droplets that has coalesced no separation is possible. So this said, they are associated, uh, the cause are associated with the effect. This is the association conditional relation, Sampayutta, number 19. The opposite of that is a dissociation conditional relation, Vipayutta, Bajaya. This refers to the relation between states not having the same physical or mental cause. Though they are simultaneously arising, they are thus regarded as separate and not coexistent. So this, for example, this you have two water molecules and they dissociate into two hydrogen uh, molecules and one oxygen molecule. So they dissociate, they separate into, or you have one human being which has his one-pointed will and then he splits into several personalities, you can say, which has their own ambivalent feeling and attitudes towards the external world. Here the cause is related to the effect through this dissociation that they separate conditional relation. 
Number 21 is the presence conditional relation, atti pachaya. It refers to the relation that causally relates itself to its effect by being present all along with the effect. It has to be there. The cause has to be there and stand by in coexistence with the effect. So here, the relation between cause and effect is that they coexist. They are present at the same time and therefore one cause or other. The other one, the next one is 22, the absence condition relation, nati pachaya. This is relation between a state which has just passed and which thus forms the necessary condition relation to and for the immediate following state by giving it an opportunity and thus open a space-time slot to arise in. So it means that for, for the effect to arise, something has to disappear, something has to be absent. If there's this hole in the brick, then something new can fall into there. Uh, so this is this absence condition relations. The cause has to be absent in order for the effect to take place. The cause has to be absent in order for the effect to come. 23 is a disappearance condition relation, vikatta pachaya. It that some, means that something has to go before something else can come. It's the relation between a state which is ceasing and thus the necessary condition relation to and for the next state by giving it an opportunity, a place, an openness to arise in. So here you see there's some ice melting and there's someone who has jumped off the swing. So the ice melting gives space for other ice to form there. And it's because this ice is melting and disappearing that the other ice can form there. And it's because this child has jumped up the swing that another child can sit on this swing. So it means that the, the conditional relation between cause and effect here is that something has to disappear first. The effect can first come into being when something is disappearing, disappearing. The dynamic absence, you can say, disappearing, the process of disappearing. Number 24 is non-disappearance. Avigata, something has not to go, it has to stay. It's the relation between a state which is remaining present and which thus forms a necessary condition relation to any other state requiring its coexistence as an essential cause for itself to arise. It means that some, if the effect ha can, can come, then the cause must not go. It has to stay there and be in, hang on in there. Then the effect can come. As soon as the, the, the cause disappears, then the effect also disappears. That's what basically this last one says. These are the 24 conditional relations as, as explained in the seven Abhidhamma Pitaka book, the Patajana. There are several ways these conditional relations can work on through dependent origination. And they work usually more than one at a time. So they can work in synthesis, as you see below. There's three relations, three arrows that works on the same object, the star. So there are several relations that work together to form the star, to form the effect. This is something else that they work in synchrony because they can come at different times here when uh, there are three working at, they just mean that there has to be three working at the same object or within the same cause and effect chain. In synchrony, the conditional relations are working together simultaneously. So there are two conditional relations are working together simultaneously to form the effect from the cause. This concludes the 24 conditional relations, the explanations of them. And as you see, there are a, a considerable amount uh, of detail uh, present 
And this explanation about a causality, the synthetic, the put together of the parts explanation of causality in early, early Buddhist philosophy. We will uh, end by checking the conditional relation Paticca Samopala sequence in reverse and call it dependent cause cessation. Cut short, when this cause is absent, this effect too is also absent, it is not existent. When this condition ceases, that condition also ceases. That phenomenon also fades away. The fading away of ignorance causes mental construction to cease. The fading of mental construction causes consciousness to cease. The fading of consciousness causing causes name and form to cease. The fading of naming and forming causes the six senses to cease. The fading of the six senses causes contact to cease. The fading of contact causes feeling to cease. The fading of feeling causes craving to cease. The fading of craving causes clinging to cease. The fading of clinging causes becoming to cease. The fading of becoming causes the process of rebirth to cease. The fading away, the drying out of rebirth causes aging, decay, sickness, and death to cease. The silencing, the fading away, the vanishing of aging, decaying, sickness, and death of the moment, of the body, of the life, and of the world causes suffering to cease. So is the cessation, the fading away, the ending on this entire mass of suffering. This, only this, is the right way to Nibbana, to lasting happiness, to peace, to absolute freedom. This is called the right way. It is much deeper than it initially appears. May many beings dig it. Thank you for your attention. Lastly, I'd also like to say thank you to those who gave food and the last this last month and to the regular supporters, which reliably uh, supports this process of producing videos and to the occasional supporters and for they are actually causing these videos to be produced for the benefit of the many, those who can understand the Dhamma, also those who come after us. So thank you for your attention and thank you for the support and remember to click subscribe down there and have a nice day. You heard Bikku Samaita from the Cypress Hermitage on the Knuckles Mountain, Bamparella, Central Hill Country, Sri Lanka. Please subscribe to the Google group Buddha Direct and visit the website whatbuddhasid.net. May all beings become thus happy thereby.
thank you. Namo. Tasso. Bhagavato. Arahato. Samma Sambuddhasa. Worthy. Anabo. And perfectly self-enlightened. Was the blessed Buddha. <laughs>